you guys. Welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 40th Anniversary Edition. Press any button to start. I have been waiting to share this with you guys for so long. Finally got my Xbox Series X up and running and I'm going to show you today the flight that means the most to me in the world. The flight that my mom and I would share when we would travel to and from home and that is from Bristol here near me in the UK, my nearest airport, over to Dublin, which is where I originally came from. And we're going to be flying the A320 Airbus. Bristol Tower Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray 320 All right, guys, here we are. West departure. Bristol Airport. Airbus Alpha Sierra this was my first introduction to the UK when I was nine years old and my mom brought me over here for a new life so this place is very special to me this is where we first met my now dad Papa V and uh, yeah it's just an amazing feeling to be able to share these memories with you guys so here it is the A320 uh, the Airbus, which is actually made, as I said, in Filton in Bristol. You can actually fly from the Filton airfield. But um, yeah, this is a beautiful plane. And um, I've been on this plane, I would say, probably about five or six times over the past 10 years. Um, this is a really lovely, comfortable plane to fly in. I've flown, where have I flown in this plane? France, Ireland, and I believe Geneva. I've flown to Geneva as well. Um, but yeah, this is a gorgeous plane. I, I love this plane. If you guys have never played Microsoft Flight Simulator, even if it doesn't seem that appealing to you, trust me, it's, it's an experience. It really is. It's just the ability to be able to go anywhere in the world and just feel like you're in control or as I'm going to be doing here as you see I'm going to let the AI take off so you can experience a professional takeoff because I don't, I don't want to mess it up for you guys but I will be doing a little bit of flying up in the air when we're flying over Wales um, over the Irish Channel um, past the Isle of Man and uh yeah it's it's pretty impressive really that the amount of stuff that you can do in this game you know like i mean i'm hopefully going to be doing a flight to new york at some point um on this game but that's going to be a long long stream on i think i'm going to have to stream that one because that's going to be obviously like five hours or something um if i use one of the big proper planes to get there as fast as we can and um, the amount of times i've flown to new york it's usually taken about five and a half hours from Gatwick so that's what I'm planning to do is Gatwick to New York but um okay we're lining up here on the runway ready for takeoff look at that beauty gorgeous isn't it all right here we are in the cockpit okay so as you can see there's our layout and we're gonna choose Flight Assistant, AI Piloting, and we're going to release the parking bay, and here we go. Okay, we just take a little look around as we get ready to take off on the runway. Here we go. It's been emotional, Bristol. See you soon. Oh man, this reminds me so much. Apply full throttle, and there we are, we've taken off. Now, if you guys have watched me uh, take off in VR, on Ace Combat VR, you'll know that um, I'm, I'm a big fan of taking off in, in games. I, I love doing that, you know, it's one of my favorite things. And in VR, it's incredible. And I hope at some point I'm gonna experience this in VR. That'll be pretty special. Okay, so. We're going to take an external view now. And as you can see, we're flying over Bristol. 
Now, this is my hometown. I went to school in Bath, which is over just there in the background there in the distance. Um, where I am right now, actually, is kind of behind us because we're flying out now towards the southwest, towards uh, Wales over there in the distance. And down there on the right, you'll see in a minute, it's going to be Clevedon in Bristol. Uh, I've played rugby against those guys. <laughs> over there, you can see it. That town there on the right. There's Bristol in the background. And you can see Bath in the distance. And you can actually kind of see my house where I am there, somewhere in the distance. At some point, I'll show you guys. <laughs> I'll show you guys where I live on this. Okay, let's go for a showcase mode. And I'll give you a little bit of a wraparound view. There we go. And that's Wales out there in the distance. Pretty amazing, isn't it? How far we've come in games. You know, I've been playing the Atari 50th Anniversary Collection. This is the 40th Anniversary Collection of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've been playing the 50th Anniversary Collection of the Atari games. And how far we've come. It's insane. And what's to come as well, you know. It's pretty incredible, really, when you think about it. beautiful plane and I've uh, actually done some work at Filton uh, when I worked uh, for the um, Ministry of Defence I did some regular work there it was sort of commission work and uh, I really enjoyed that when I was in my early 20s it was very interesting I had no idea you know of anything to do with planes or anything but just to be uh, you know in the kind of the administrative side of it i got to see a lot of things okay here's the cockpit view and uh, as you can see we're uh, gaining altitude so how about you guys what's the uh, most memorable flight you've had have you guys ever flown before that's another thing i should ask i know there's some people out there that haven't flown Got the rest of the plane back there, obviously. Look at those dials, man. So complicated. You got to give it to the pilots who learn how to navigate all these controls. It's pretty impressive. And there we are. There's Wales, Cumbran. Go for an external view. That is Wales, boys and girls. to fall from the distance there now the flight to Ireland should take about 45 minutes uh, or a little bit longer it depends whether I take a little bit of a detour because I want to show you guys my hometown so I'm not going to take the direct flight path I want to show you where I used to grow up in Dublin uh, which is a place called Dunleary so I want to fly over Dunleary and be able to show you guys the harbour that my biological father, who died in 1985, used to take me out onto. And uh, hopefully I'll get up to fly over that a couple of times to show you. I remember um, my first flight to New York. I, I, I'll always remember this. Uh, nobody had filled out their visas to land in the United States because obviously that's something you have to you fill out your visa when you get there. But the girl that um, had helped me arrange my flight in my local travel agents, she sorted all that out for me beforehand. So I, I had it all ready. And I only had to sign a couple of little extra bits of paper on the plane, which is what they get you to do when you're flying into America. And um, But I'll always remember that. I was the only one who was able to sit back and enjoy flying over New York. Everybody else is filling out their pieces of paper. But that's something I will say to people, like when you're when you're flying to the States, always make sure you have your visas ready. I know that there's gonna be a 
another update coming soon for this and um, there's updates all the time for microsoft flight simulator but i know there's one coming up um with i believe correct me if i'm wrong guys who have more info and are more in the know about this game than i am but i believe there's more planes coming um i originally started flying in this game in a just a kind of a short little small kind of jet plane which is kind of interesting actually okay i'm gonna take over and i'm going to let the computer do its work I'm gonna give you a nice panoramic view look at that beautiful day as well it's about 11 15 in the morning so yeah the um skies are clear the skies are clear it does make you wonder as well like what what people see who are pilots you know what kind of things have they seen in the sky because you always hear stories you know what what kind of things have they actually seen you know some of them say they've seen unidentified flying objects you know whether you believe in things like that or not it's one thing or another i guess but wales is quite an extensive bit of the uk as you can see um we'll be heading it into the irish sea fairly soon you can see it there in the distance we're just going up the southwest of england and then into wales Okay, I'm going to take over for a little while, do a little bit of flying myself. It's kind of interesting actually how you learn the acceleration and your altitude and you have to keep it very, very even. Sometimes you can go over and it will tell you that you're... Um, over speed over speed and i do that quite often but yeah it's you know it's all trial and error as you can see there if it goes into the yellow on the altitude on the left that means you're going over speed so you just have to kind of balance it out a little bit I know there's quite a few people out there that wish this was on the PlayStation. So do I. I. I really feel like there is a way that we could get a version of something like this on the PlayStation. Um, to have a kind of a simulator flight thing because they have train simulators. They have every kind of simulator. But, you know, I'd love a, a flight simulator thing on the PS5 as well. Because this is just unparalleled as far as I'm concerned. It's just stunning. Most of the time when I fly to Ireland, I would uh, go on either Ryanair or... Back in the early days, my mom and I would fly with Aer Lingus. Now, you, you can fly all those planes on here, um, which I probably will do at some point on another flight, maybe a night flight or something. But I remember the turbulence sometimes my mom and I would feel on some of these flights. Oh, my God. It would scare you. <laughs> like, going over the Irish Sea, you get some fairly bad turbulence. Oh, my God, if you went on a boat, on the Irish Sea, oh, I'm terrible. I'm I'm a good flyer. I'm even great with turbulence, but um, I'm not good on the sea. I'm really not good in the sea. Okay. Let's. Uh, Get back in the cockpit. 
see how things are going. So what games have you guys been playing recently? I've been playing uh, mostly Forza Horizon 4 and this and a little bit of Forza Horizon 5 but I, I gotta say Forza Horizon 4 has really taken over Forza Horizon 5 for me it's um it's the whole UK thing you know obviously it's that that's the angle for me that I just love but um you know my co-pilot's gone to the toilet <laughs> no, I'm kidding he's not there but <laughs> stunning views beautiful world really that we live in isn't it when you think about it as Christopher Reeve said in Superman 4 when you look at it it's just one world it's so true as cliche and as trite as it sounds it is just one world at the end of the day you know all these things that happen around us we sometimes get caught up in so many different things that really don't amount to anything you know other than when it comes to money and power but then I guess without money and power we wouldn't have such things as this you know the um, luxuries that we have in today's world so it's you know it's give and take it's being caught between a rock and a hard place really I guess you could say just to get philosophical on your ass for a moment <laughs> go outside and have a look okay we're coming towards uh the coast now we're going out towards the irish sea and we'll be in dunleary dublin fairly soon going up on the west coast there up towards the north of england Don't worry, folks. We'll get you there on time. Hello. <laughs> nice angle there from the wing of the plane. I was going to do a piece of video for this, but um, maybe next time. Nice rear view there of the jet engine. take over for a little bit let the uh, computer rest for a few moments <laughs> okay if you want to speed up your flight a little bit increase the speed obviously What's the longest flight you guys have done? Uh, the longest flight I've done is uh, 24 hours. Uh, yeah, 24 hours. That's the longest flight I've done. But um, I know some certain people have uh, done extended flights over that as well. So they've flown 24 hours, stopped off at somewhere else, and then carried on. I guess you could call that one, one journey. Because even with 24-hour flights, you have a stop off usually, you know. So as in Australia... Uh, for me, you would stop off, uh, and then you would have like a like a, a two hour flight at the end, so or sometimes a three or four hour flight. 
Okay, over there to the right, I don't know if you can see it in the distance, you'll probably get a better view of it in a few moments, is the Idle White. I think I said the Isle of Man earlier. I do apologize, it's the Isle of White. I'm getting confused now. Is it the Isle of Wight or the Isle of Man? I'm totally confused. What's between Ireland and England? Oh my God. My, my geography's just gone out the window. Is it the Isle of Man or the Isle of Wight? Well, either way, you can see it there on the right. Be a little bit of a more of extended view. Oh, look at that! We went inside the plane. Hello. <laughs> Let's go and see the cargo. Now you can do uh, a proper like tour of the inside of the plane, which I will show you in another video. Um, and you can actually go and sit down and sit in one of the passenger seats and everything. So, um, but for today, I'll just do a general flight over for you. There's the engines. There it is, the Isle of Wight. <laughs> I'm so confused now. Is it the Isle of Wight or Isle of Man? Please somebody help me. I'm your flight captain and I have no idea what that is on the right. It's either the Isle of Wight or the Isle of Man. Either way, we'll be getting there fairly soon. All right. Okay, everything's looking fairly smooth at the moment. We should be approaching Ireland fairly soon. Now, like I said, we'll probably have a little bit of an extension uh, to the time in the flight because I want to go over Dunleary and I imagine we're going to have to circle back around again. So I imagine we'll fly back over the harbour again as well. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little look uh, it's to where I grew up. I know that there is um, hopefully going to be a new version of the train simulator coming for the uh, PlayStation sometime soon, which I, I think people don't give that the credit it actually deserves the actual the train simulator is a really good fun it sounds like a really bo you know boring idea but i mean look there, there'll be some people who find this boring you know but it's whether you're a, a plane nerd or a flight nerd you know it's one of those things you know it's uh this video isn't going to be for everyone but yeah i do like those simulations you know like this trick simulators as well another thing i love I mean, you know, you could really call Forza kind of like a, a kind of countryside driving simulator, really. And of course, then there's the ultimate Gran Turismo, the ultimate driving simulator. Okay, you can see Ireland now coming into view. It's just about coming in on the horizon. And a little interesting fact, anybody who uh, is listening to this and is from Dunleary, where I came from, where we grew up, 
you could actually see on a clear day from Dunleary Harbour, you could see Hollyhead across the water on a very clear day. A day like this, you could literally see Hollyhead on the horizon, which is pretty amazing. There you are, there's the, uh, the Isle of the Unknown in the background. <laughs> seems so expansive when you see it like this but actually it's so close together when you look at it on a world map now the approach into Dublin is fairly simple it's very fairly straightforward but um, when you're going along the east coast of Ireland there's so many beautiful places that you can look at that it's uh, it's always quite interesting, especially if you're from there, to, to see all the, the, the spots that you would recognise. So aside from Dunleary, the harbour that you'll see now in a, in a little while when we fly past it, there's also uh, the last tool, which is right next to it. Then there's Black Rock, which is where my mum grew up as a little girl. Um, then there's, uh, there's Donnybrook, there's Ballybrack, which you can see in the distance. The Brack, the motherland, as people used to call it. And uh, yeah, there's, there's so many places, you know. And then there's the Wicklow Mountains out in the distance as well, obviously beyond that. And then, of course, there's Bray on the horizon. That's out on the coast as well. Okay, you can see the coast of Ireland there now. Just coming into view. Beautiful. If you would like any confectionaries on this flight, please don't hesitate to ask the hostess. Hello sir, can I get you anything? Uh, can I have some uh, peanuts, even though I don't like peanuts, and can I have some Coca-Cola and a Guinness please? Hey, we don't sell Guinness on this flight sir, only on Irish flights. But this is an Irish flight. No sir, this is a British flight actually, we're just flying to Ireland. Alright, that's right. Uh, my mum and I used to have some funny times travelling over to Ireland, we really did. We got some great stories. I remember my mum and I, every time we'd go to Heathrow, um, we'd go on the underground on Heathrow, and I would push my mum on the trolley. She'd sit on the trolley, and I would, we'd get there as quick as possible, and she used to love sitting on the trolley. Now I'd push it, and she'd go, oh, the table, slow down. <laughs> so many happy memories of my mum. flown from how many different airplanes airports have i flown from in the uk okay there's bristol obviously which is where i'm from uh swansea i've flown there with uh, my friend simon when we went to tenerife um uh cardiff airport i've flown from um gatwick i've flown from i've flown to florida from gatwick i've flown to new york from heathrow I think that's it from the UK, as far as I know. I believe there is another one I've flown from. Oh well, considering it is actually part of the UK, I've flown into uh, Belfast. That's technically part of the UK. So yeah. Okay. Now I've taken over the controls here a little bit, as you can see, I'm uh, tilting over a little bit.
and we're going to approach in a little while but I'm just going to change the camera a little bit and hopefully see if I can pan out a little bit towards Dunleary because we're approaching it now so it should be anytime soon it's just out over here it's going over to the coast here We'll just pan out a little bit further from the plane. Move a little bit further away. What I might do is I might just go back to the plane in a few moments and I will hopefully try and approach it myself. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, let's get back to the external view. Okay, now we'll be coming in anytime soon now. Yeah, you can definitely, you can see uh, the outlet there of Dublin and Hoth, which uh, Hoth is, anybody from Ireland and where I'm from will know that, it's on the other side of Dunleary. That's the little bit sticking out there, uh, just to the right of the indicator. And I am going to take over the controls for a little moment and hopefully try and approach into Dunleary. This is going to extend the flight a little bit. Okay, wish me luck. Ooh, sorry guys, <laughs> a little bit turbulence. Going to adjust my flying angle a little bit. Just tilt it ever so slightly. Sorry guys, apologies for the turbulence. Okay, now we're just coming in over Dunleary now. So anybody who knows Dunleary, you'll recognize the port sticking out. And I will show you guys now the harbor that I live by. This is where I grew up, just around here. This is where I was born and bred. I was actually born in Dublin, which is where we're flying into, but I was brought up here by this harbour on the left. I kind of lived a few miles up from the harbour in a place called Kalini, in a little road called Beechwood Lawn. That's Hoth in Dublin. Coming in quite close now. Beautiful weather today, so uh, we get a really good view of it. Okay, and there is Dunleary Harbour, guys. So my cousins Mark and Paul, you'll recognise this. Earl, John Larkin, if you're watching. <laughs> there it is, there's Dunleary Harbour. And I lived just to the left of that harbour. I'm going to change over to AI controls now. And I will pan around. You can see it while the computer flies us over there. There you go. There's Dunleary Harbour. And I used to walk out on that left harbour there with my dad. And we would go all the way out on that left pier. And we'd watch the Sea Link ferries come in. Great memories. And there you go. There's Dorky Island around there. There's Hoth, and that is Dublin in the distance. And I lived just up beyond that harbour in Kalini. And around here is Black Rock, where my mum lived on the left down there. Cargo and we're just coming in, in and around Dublin City now. 
Now, I imagine the AI is going to take a reconfigured flight path now because I took it a little bit off course. Beautiful Dublin. It's good to be back. It's good to be back in the motherland. Let's take a cockpit view. And there we go. We're just coming in, in now over the outskirts of Dublin City. going to be taking a unscheduled detour around a particular flight path let's take a more extensive View. Now we'll be flying over areas like Crumlin, which is where my dad grew up around here, and different areas like Swords, north of Dublin, which is where my sister grew up. Hello, Pamela, if you're watching. And hello, Josh. Now, those blue indicators that you saw a little moment ago, which you'll see in a little while again, they are the indicated flight path that will take us back on route around towards Dunleary again and then back in towards Dublin. There you go, you can see them there. You know, it's funny, every time you go back to Ireland, you just know you're back in Ireland. It's one of those lovely countries that it just has a vibe about it. And it sounds so cliched and tried to say it, but it really is true. Ireland just has a feel about it, has a vibe about it that I feel like no other country has. And maybe I'm being a bit biased because I'm Irish, but Ireland just feels different. It really does, you know, considering it's right next to the UK, it just has a completely different feel to it than the UK. It really does. Going to okay, our reschedule of flight path should be taking us out to the left here in a moment. And then I'm fairly sure we'll be going back out towards Dunleary Harbour, taking one last swoop over there, and then coming into Dublin. There we go. I'm really hungry now, actually. <laughs> Dublin 
I might take a sip of a drink while we're approaching into Dublin. Okay. There you go, there's the um There's the flight indicators telling us where to go. I get you a little bit closer actually to where I actually lived, to the road I actually lived on. Around this way. Glass tool and uh beach with lawn. You know, one of the best things about going to Dublin, obviously, is uh, the Guinness factory, which I know a lot of people have heard about, but really is. My father is a huge fan of Guinness. I like Guinness. I love Guinness as well. Um, but I, I, I'm a Guinness draft drinker. My dad can drink both original and draft. Uh, the original taste Guinness is, it's a fairly acquired taste, but the, the draft my god it's beautiful it's so creamy and delicious and smooth it's it really is it's lovely even talking about it now i'm thinking god i could do with a nice cold pint of guinness or murphy's but like me murphy's i'm not bitter i was the first boy in cart to kiss her but like me murphy's i'm not bitter and then there's kilkenny's and then of course caffrey's whatever happened to caffrey's and that was lovely I used to love Caffrey's. Okay. Now, I'm gonna pan around here and you should see the wheels are already down for making the approach. It's gonna be a fairly long approach as you can see. Now, a lot of this around here is where I grew up. As you can see in the distance, we're heading back towards Stoneleary, but this around here is pretty much where I grew up as a kid. All around here. This would be uh, Stolorgan. Um, I guess it would also be around the vicinity of a lot of the parks near me as well. Then there's obviously Ashgrove and Monkstown, which is where my cousins grew up and my mum and her brother grew up with my nanny and granddad, which would be just around here. Up on the Grove. Sitting on the wall. No, I'm in. Dean's Grange. It's pretty amazing to be flying over here considering this is all places that I know where, you know, part of my childhood. Now, as you can see, we're coming back out, flying directly over the harbour again, as I thought we would, because I know it's on usually part on the trajectory of a inbound flight path into Dublin. There we 
there we are you get a much better view now of Dunleary Dunleary shopping centre there it is there's Dunleary shopping centre right down there my mum and I used to go shopping and we go to schooners and have a look at over the harbour and there is that harbour on the right is where my dad and I would walk out pretty amazing and there is Beechwood Lawn somewhere up there. <laughs> okay, inbound flight path now. Enjoying the view is what I have a Coca Cola. I think the first flight simulator game I ever played was the first Microsoft Flight Simulator was on DOS back in nineteen eighty four. Eight or nine, so it will pro probably would have been the second or third incarnation of the game. Oh my god, how far we've come though. It's insane. How far the graphics have come. Whoever thought it would get to look this realistic. But like I said, you know, th these kind of games aren't for everyone, you know. There's going to be a lot of people out there, I'm sure, right now, I think, oh my God, this is boring as hell. You know, I don't want to be sat watching a, a flight in real time like this. But uh, to nerds like me, this is like, this is like, you know, nerd nirvana to me. Okay, here we are. Coming in on the approach now to Dublin Airport. sure all your belongings are stowed underneath or overhead. Reduce speed. Reduce speed. Okay, we're coming in now. Try and give you guys as good a view as I can as we're approaching into Dublin Airport. There's a few new things that are coming up soon on this channel. Uh, I will be hopefully covering the PlayStation VR 2. I say hopefully I will be covering the PSVR 2 when it finally arrives in February. That's going to be pretty exciting. Um, let's give you guys a external view of the approach towards the runway. There it is in the distance, as you can see. Coming in now. 500. And we'll go to a cockpit view as we come in. 400. 300. Here we go. We're just coming in now to land. 200. Hello Dublin. 60, 50, 40, Hello Dublin. 20, 20, How are you? <laughs> uh, 
Ah, oh, Jesus, it's good to be back. Go oh, in. How's your belly for another? <laughs> oh, man. So many great memories of coming into Dublin. Mom and I used to get so emotional when we'd be leaving, but we get emotional when we'd arrive as well. I remember when we were leaving to 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 move into the UK, uh, and leaving Ireland was so emotional when we had to say goodbye to my mom's brother and my cousins, Mark and Paul, and my auntie Marion, and they were looking at us through the duty free window, and we were all in tears. You know, it was such an emotional time. So yeah, it's a it's a special flight. This, like I said, okay, we're coming in now. Uh, so we can be taxied towards uh, our arrival gate. Taxi aircraft to chosen destination. Welcome to Dublin. Welcome to Irie. During your stay here, make sure you drink lots of Guinness Eat lots of potato crisps and watch RTE. Happy Jesus. Dublin Ground Airbus Alpha Sierra X Ray 320 taxi to the gate. Airbus Alpha Sierra X Ray 320 taxi to gate 156. Dublin Airport is actually a very impressive airport, I must say. Um, especially now what they've done to the main terminal, it's really, really something. Um, funnily enough, talking about computer games and video games, uh, my first ever exposure to Outrun, the arcade game, with the Ferrari car arcade machine, the one that sit down arcade machine, that was a Dublin Airport for me. That was the first time I ever saw the Outrun arcade machine. That would have been in 1987, so it would have been about the year after it came out, or probably around the time it came out in Ireland. And I remember seeing it in Dublin Airport, and we were all just like, oh my God, look at that, look at the graphics. And it's hard to believe now, you know, nearly 40 years later, 37 years later, you know, look at the graphics we have now. But um, yeah, that was my first exposure to uh, Outrun was in Dublin Airport. Actually, it was my first exposure to a lot of big arcade machines there. Um, I believe it was my first exposure to Street Fighter 2 was in Dublin Airport. That was my first exposure. Oh, the, uh, no, actually, I tell a lie, that might have been in Bath, in the city of Bath, in the, my local Quasar Arcade, yeah. No, I know which one it was now. I know which fighting game it was. My first ever exposure to Double Dragon was in Dublin Airport. That's right. And then I remember seeing it in my local sports centre over here in the UK, in Corsham. And thinking, oh, that's the fighting game I played in Dublin Airport. But yeah. So, you know, even as video game memories for me, this airport. Because that was back in the day, you know, when arcades were an event. And Dublin is also the only place where I've seen the Superman Tato arcade game. I haven't seen that anywhere else. Obviously, you can play it on an emulator now and on the internet, but it's not the same. Um, okay, we're just being taxied now to our chosen destination, which would be our arrival gate, so we can let the passengers off. Let them have a lovely time in Dublin. some of the planes around there you can see easy jets and some air linguses all parked up how are you lads uh, made up later I have a few points down in dublin uh, uh, murphy's right all right lads no problem jesus you're right there Laco. what's the story you're right there pal yeah yeah or as my uncle Albert would say i'm grand <laughs> There's a few destinations out there and 
Dublin that you can discover. Okay, we're just crossing one of the runways now to get to our arrival gate. I believe that's Terminal 3 over there, because I think we're going over to Terminal 1. Take an external view. Well, guys, I am very, very thankful for you staying with me for even this long. I wouldn't blame you if this isn't your cup of tea, like I said. This is a, a fairly niche kind of video to do. So, um, but I will be doing some more of them. Um, so, you know. Obviously, if this is your kind of thing, then hopefully you'll join me for another one. But if it's not, I totally understand. You know, if you'd rather watch me race cars and beat people up, then that's understandable because that's what video games is about. But yeah, I thought I'd just change it up for a little bit with this video. Do something a little bit more methodical. bit more simulator simulator Microsoft flight simulator 2020 40th anniversary edition okay just coming in now Some people going off to Spain there and France. Hello, boys and girls. And you'll see uh, the taxiing ferry guys now, whose job it is to park up the planes, which is never an easy job, I should imagine. I have actually a friend who I used to go to school with who that's his job. But um, yeah, it's a very intense job, I imagine. Here we go, and said little guys, you'll see him now. There's our docking bay, our chosen destination. We have arrived. All right, there we go. All right, this is the last one we're doing today, lads. Damn, off for the curry, right? I think I might join you. There we go. Airbus 320 parked. Okay, make sure everything is as it should be. Let's uh, go back inside into the cockpit, make sure everything is ready to be disengaged and switched off. There we go boys and girls thank you so much for joining me for this flight from bristol to dublin from the uk to ireland uh to the republic of ireland i should say i hope you enjoyed this and i will be doing some more of these as i said at some point but yeah until next time thanks for flying with me and enjoy your stay in ireland <laughs>